6th of September 2023. Welcome to Somalia's premier number one station for news and updates. I'm your presenter, Abrahman Yusuf. Tonight, we have a couple of stories lined up for you. But first, let's take a look at the stories that are making our headlines. President Mahmoud boosts morale of troops in visit to Maha's forward operating base. U.S. government commits $2 million to strengthen the fight against Al-Shabaab in Somalia. Prime Minister Barre and Minister al qatar discuss bilateral cooperation and development support. Somaliland grants pardon to anti-government fighters, resolving prolonged electoral dispute. Glad to have you back. Now let's delve into a full bulletin. The President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed paid a visit on Tuesday to the troops stationed at Maha's forward operating base in the Hiran region. The President visit to the camp of the Ali bin Abidali Brigade in Mahas district aimed to commend the troops for their significant achievements against Al-Shabaab terrorist group, while urging them to remain vigilant and resolute in the ongoing fight against Al-Shabaab. One of the sons of Somalia's President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed has emerged in the public eye, but this time is for a different reason. He has stepped up into the limelight by accompanying his father on the front line in the war against the militant group Al-Shabaab. As President Mahmoud left Mahas in the Hiran region and arrived in the Aden Yabal district, he was joined by his son, both adorned in military uniforms. Together, they inspected the district, which has been liberated from the clutches of Al-Shabaab last year. The images of the president's son, standing side by side with his father, have ignited a firestorm on the internet, with countless netizens praising the move as a positive step that boosts the morale within the military. According to analysts, the development holds way a Somali government has often faced criticism for allegedly sending their children abroad to live comfortable lives, detached from the realities faced by their, faced by their compatriots. However, President Mahmoud has shattered that perception by allowing his son to accompany him to the army camps and witness firsthand challenging conditions faced by soldiers on the front lines. Last year, Mr. Mahmoud declared that his government would wage a total war against the Al-Qaeda-affiliated militant group Al-Shabaab. Since then, the Somali army has intensified its effort in combating Al-Shabaab, successfully liberating numerous villages and towns from the group's grip. In a display of commitment and leadership, the president himself has embarked on a series of visits to the front lines. Just last month, he left the capital city of Mogadishu and assumed command from Dusamareb, the capital of Galmuduk state in central Somalia. Leaving Galmuduk on Sunday, he journeyed to Mahas in the Hiran region, where he met the army to provide them with a much-needed morale boost. Today, he landed in Aden Yabal, situated in the southeastern Middle Shabele region of Somalia, which had been liberated from Al Shabaab's control just last year. Aden Yabal served as a training ground for Al Shabaab militants. Al Shabaab is a militant group based in Somalia. The group emerged in the mid 2000s as an offshoot of the Islamic Courts Union, which had gained control over the large part of southern Somalia. Al Shabaab, which means the youth in Arabic, initially presented itself as a nationalist movement seeking to establish an Islamic state in Somalia governed by a strict interpretation of the Sharia law. Over the years, Al-Shabaab has evolved into a formidable insurgency and a regional threat. The group has been responsible for numerous acts of terrorism, including suicide bombings, assassinations, and guerrilla-style attacks targeting civilians, government officials, and the Africa Union transition mission in Somalia. The U.S. government has announced a financial support of $2 million. The funds will be channeled through the UN support office in Somalia and will be primarily utilized to enhance the logistic capabilities of the Somali security forces in their joint operation with the Africa Union Transition Mission in Somalia, ATMIS. Here's a full story. The US government has announced a financial support of $2 million. The funds will be channeled through the United Nations support office in Somalia and will primarily be utilized to enhance the logistic capabilities of the Somali security forces in their joint operations with the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia. According to a statement released by the U.S. Embassy in Mogadishu, the allocated funds will specifically be used to finance transport in theater medical evacuation services for the Somali security forces, aligning with the mandate of the United Nations Support Office in Somalia. This support will play a crucial role in providing necessary logistical backing for the Somali security forces as they continue their battle against Al-Shabaab. According to a statement released by the U.S. Embassy in Mogadishu, the allocated funds will specifically be used to finance transport and in-theater medical evacuation services for the Somali security forces, aligning with the mandate of the United Nations Support Office in Somalia. 
This support will play a crucial role in providing the necessary logistical backing for the Somali security forces as they continue their battle against Al-Shabaab. Shane Dixon, the strategy affairs of the U.S. Embassy in Mogadishu, emphasize the importance of strong logistical support for the Somali and Atme security forces in their fight against Al-Shabaab. He expressed pride in supporting the United Nations Support Office in Somalia, considering it a vital partner in advancing peace and security in Somalia. The United Nations Support Office in Somalia, mandated by the UN Security Council, plays a critical role in providing logistical assistance to the Somali security forces and admins in their joint operations against Al-Shabaab. Currently, the United Nations Support Office in Somalia supports 15,900 Somali security forces by addressing their specific logistical needs. Aisa Kirabo Kaisira, the chief of the United Nations Support Office in Somalia, held the U.S. government's contribution as timely and impactful in enhancing their support to the Somali security forces. She emphasized that the support package aligns with the priorities set by the federal government of Somalia and will significantly strengthen the United Nations Support Office's ability to provide agile logistical support. The fight against Al-Shabaab remains a top priority for both Somalia and the international community. The U.S. government's commitment of $2 million demonstrates the unwavering support for Somalia security forces and their determination to help Somali security forces overcome the challenges posed by Al-Shabaab. This contribution is expected to have a positive impact on the ground, enhancing overall effectiveness of the joint operations and advancing the common goal of achieving lasting peace and stability in Somalia. The Prime Minister of Somalia, Hamza Abdi Barre, welcomed Qatar's Minister of State and International Cooperation, Lola bint Rashid El Qatar, at his residence in Doha on Wednesday. The Prime Minister of Somalia, Hamza Abdi Barre, welcomed Qatar's Minister of State for International Cooperation, Lola bint Rashid Al Qatar, at his residency in Doha on Wednesday. The meeting served as a platform to discuss and strengthen bilateral cooperation relations between the two nations and to explore Qatar's continuous support for development projects in Somalia. Amidst an atmosphere of mutual respect and shared commitment, Prime Minister Hamza Abdi Barre and Minister Lawa Pinter Rashid Al Qatar engaged in an extensive dialogue and discussing strategic importance of cooperation in various domains. The discussion is focused on enhancing political, economic, and cultural ties between Somalia and Qatar while emphasizing the mutual benefits that can be derived from fostering a robust partnership. Both leaders acknowledged the historical ties between their counters and expressed a shared vision for further deepening relations through increased trade, investment, and people-to-people -people exchanges. They recognized the potential for mutually beneficial cooperation in sectors such as energy, infrastructure, agriculture, education, and health care. The two leaders emphasized the significance of creating an enabling environment that attracts foreign direct investment and facilitates economic diversification. Both leaders expressed their commitment to exploring new business opportunities and facilitating partnerships between the private sectors of Somalia and Qatar. The Somalian authorities have extended a pardon to the anti-government fighters who have taken refuge in Ga'an Libah mountains effectively bringing an end to a protected electoral disagreement. The Ministry of Internal Affairs of Somaliland issued a statement on Tuesday confirming the government's decision and declaring the matters closed. The Somaliland authorities have extended a pardon to the anti-government fighters who had taken refuge in the Ga'an Libah mountains, effectively bringing an end to a protracted electoral disagreement. The Ministry of Internal Affairs of Somaliland issued a statement on Tuesday confirming the government's decision and declaring the matter closed. Last week, a committee comprising of respected traditional elders successfully mediated an agreement between the government and opposition groups, providing a much-needed resolution to the long-standing election dispute that had plagued the nation. At the heart of the political discord between the government and the opposition lay the disagreement over the sequencing of the election of political organizations and the presidential election. President Moussa Bihi had advocated for the election of political organizations to precede the presidential election a position that had been met with reluctance from the opposition. However, a crucial breakthrough was achieved as the committee determined that both the elections for political organizations and the presidential post would be conducted on the same day, specifically on November 13th of 2024. This decision aimed to ensure a fair and inclusive electoral process that would enable the participation of all political stakeholders. 
As part of the negotiated agreement, the immediate dissolution of the anti-government rebels was also stipulated, a condition that the opposition accepted. In return, the government pledged to grant pardons to the rebels, offering them an opportunity to reintegrate into society and contribute positively to the nation's progress. Furthermore, the clan to which the anti-government rebels belong has been instructed to provide compensation to the families of the 10 soldiers who lost their lives in attacks against government forces. Additionally, the rebels have been directed to hand over their weapons and vehicles to the government, ensuring the restoration of peace and security in the region. The anti-government rebel leaders have expressed that their decision to take up arms was a response to President Musabihi's refusal to hold the election and the use of force against demonstrators who were demanding timely polls. With the resolution of the electoral dispute and the government's commitment to conducting the elections as scheduled, the rebel leaders have now chosen the path of reconciliation and peaceful coexistence. Lovely viewers, the Somaliland story brings us to the end of our bulletin. Thank you for staying put. Stay put, rather. <laughs> Lovely viewers, the story from Somaliland brings us to the end of our bulletin. I wish to thank the Dalsa Media Fraternity for making this news bulletin a success. Your lovely viewer, wherever, wherever you're watching in from, have yourself a lovely night and be blessed. Stay put for more stories in our subsequent bulletins.